Hi, I'm Gary White for Central Kentucky Television. I'm here with Lizzie Spaulding at the Marion County Extension Office. And today we're going to make some sizzling chicken stir fry. Yes. Very healthy sounding. Yes, uh, actually, um, I saw the recipe. This is in the NEP calendar. It's the okay. March recipe, so we're in the calendar and we're on time. And if you don't have that calendar, you can get them from the extension offices, right? Yes, you can get the uh, NEP calendar. It um, has wonderful recipes in it. We also have Chop Chop magazines available for the kids. I don't know if you've seen those around uh -huh. Gary, but okay. there's some good recipes in those too. Chop Chop. Kid friendly, yes, Chop Chop. So <laughs> you and can healthy. Yeah, get those with your kids. They might have brought some home from school. That's where they came from, is the extension office. So anytime you need a recipe, the place to to go is to the extension go. office. Yes. That's right. For but that food and nutrition calendar. So I, it's I thought, sizzling chicken. I thought it looked really good. So we're going to try it, see how it tastes. I haven't made it yet. Okay. So we're going to see. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our sauce that's going to go over our sizzling chicken. So what you're going to do, you're going to take one tablespoon of cornstarch. Which I have pre-measured those out. Let's get your one tablespoon in there. Okay. Then with that, we're going to mix two tablespoons of reduced sodium soy sauce. Soy sauce. But you can find reduced sodium soy sauce for anybody who's ever eaten soy sauce. I thought. Yeah. <laughs> to get reduced sodium, that's got a lot of sodium in it. Yeah. It does exist. I like soy sauce. Um, two tablespoons of white vinegar. Get that in there. Okay. Um, two tablespoons of sugar. Okay. We have two teaspoons of ketchup. So we got a lot of flavors going yeah, on in here. Yeah, there's a lot of mixing in here. I'm going to put in a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. But there's some good flavors. Yes, and then a fourth of a cup of water. We're going to mix in there with that as well. Okay. Now this is a sauce for the sizzling chicken. How yes. many people are we going to be serving with this? Um, this makes four one cup servings. Four. So okay. enough for a, a family meal. Mm-hmm. A family of four. Family of four. Did you get a cup? And you can smell all the flavors in that. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Some of those yeah. times we need smell a vision. It smells really good. All those mixing together there. It does. Sounds like an interesting sauce. Yeah, and a healthy flavors. option for you too yes. because of the reduced sodium and all that stuff. Now, not to uh, try to be deceiving, but that soy sauce still doesn't have a lot of sodium in it because it does. But anytime <laughs> that we can get reduced sugar, reduced sodium, we want to try to do that. So a right. little bit less. Okay. You can scale back. You can scale back. So we've got that uh, mixed in there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to cook our chicken. We um, have some chicken here that I have cut up into... Uh, it's about half inch pieces mm -hmm. that we're going to put into our skillet here. We're going to start, um, we're going to saute that. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to chop up our vegetables because those are going to go in there after okay. our chicken gets cooked. That way our chicken doesn't burn while I'm chopping up the vegetables. So okay. we're going to do that. But we have all the chicken cut up. We have all the chicken mm -hmm. already cut up. Um, and you're going to use three cups of vegetables. You can use whatever you desire. Okay. Um, now, typically when I think of stir fry, I'm thinking about carrots and broccoli and cauliflower was the first thing I thought of, but I thought for a little extra color, we might put a little bit of a red pepper in there. So I'm going to chop some of it up first. Okay. So our stir fry is going to have an assortment of vegetables. It is going to have an assortment. A healthy option. Which you could use um, any color pepper. You could put onions in here. You could put... Um, Snap peas are oftentimes in stir fry. Oh, yeah, I like snap peas too. I like onions, so that would work too. Keep going. <laughs> right? You could put anything. Well, during the summer, if you're making a stir fry, you could definitely put squash or zucchini in it, something to keep in uh, mind. Mm -hmm. Yes. For summer edition of your stir fry. Now, they take a little longer to cook usually, don't they? Or could they uh, be just as. Well, um, it depends on the consistency that you want them, really. Yes. Um, it's one reason why I'm going to cut our broccoli and cauliflower and carrots up smaller is so they'll cook a little bit faster. It's kind of the same way with that squash and zucchini. If you cut it thinly, mm -hmm. it doesn't take quite as long to okay. cut those up. So you just have to really be mindful of the size of your vegetables. And we're looking for three cups. Three cups. Cool. Mm -hmm. Total or of each? Total. 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 
So this will add a nice red color with the green and the white and the orange. That's what I thought. That's why know. I got a red pepper. When you're making stuff, you want to be visually appealing as well. You don't want to have all the same color because sometimes you do eat with your eyes, right? Yes, we want it to look good. We want people to eat our stir fry. <laughs> and this is one of those things, like I say often, um, you can use whatever you have on hand in the house. So if you have been using vegetables for something this week, you know you're gonna need a certain vegetable for something you wanna fix later on in the week. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, buy uh, more of that. You can usually get it cheaper if you do it that way. And then you can just have it on hand instead of having to go out and buy specific vegetables. Right. Yeah, a lot of the recipes we do, you can customize to whatever's mm -hmm. your particular preference. That's the thing with this recipe. It gives you some ideas for vegetables, but it doesn't tell you um, specifically what you have to use. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've got a cup there of our pepper, and I'm just going to chop our broccoli up a little bit finer. Broccoli is a very, broccoli is a super fruit, so it's always good for you, right? Right. <laughs> I think broccoli is delicious, so that broccoli. is definitely one that I would want to put mm -hmm. in the stir fry. Mm -hmm. Kids tend to think, ooh, broccoli, but if they'll try it, especially with the blend of the flavors and the sauce, if they get to try it with something like that, it's a little bit different, not just, you know, your old traditional broccoli. Mm -hmm. Maybe you'll find a way that they like it prepared. We actually had, had a group of kids in the extension office, and we made, um, vegetable pizzas, so okay. English muffin, some pizza sauce, and some cheese, and we topped them with carrots and broccoli, and the kids were saying that same, singing that same old tune, Gary, I don't like broccoli, I don't like broccoli, but guess what? Uh, they probably never ate it. They <laughs> ate it on the pizza, so sometimes yeah. we just have to be adventuresome. adventurous and crafty with our vegetables to get the kids to eat them. Yeah, cauliflower is good too. What do you prefer, broccoli or cauliflower? I really like them both. I mm -hmm. love vegetables. What's really interesting is cauliflower, like you can make something that looks like mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. I have seen those. I haven't tried it. I always think, I need to make that because I mm -hmm. really like cauliflower. I would like that. I haven't yet, but yes, there are those recipes out there. Yeah. Now, the issue there is just like with mashed potatoes. I like all the butter and yeah, you have, salt you and everything. Yeah, it doesn't make them any less fattening if you're going to load them up with all those extra goodies. Yeah, <laughs> but they are good. <laughs> Moderation is the key to everything, That right? is the key with everything. So the reason you're cutting up the different vegetables, the vegetables of whatever your choice would be, is to help them cook more quickly. Yes, we're All just right. going to um, saute these. We're going to cook the chicken first and we're going to add the vegetables in. But, you know, you put in a piece of broccoli like this, it's not going to cook very well. So that's why we're chopping them up a little bit smaller. Plus, when you eat this, I think, well, at least myself, I like the smaller bites, bites. Mm -hmm. of vegetables. So how long does the whole uh, recipe take? Well, we're going to cook our chicken until it gets done. That's going to take us about um, five or six minutes, probably. Then we're going to add the vegetables, um, cook them until they get tender, which will probably be an additional four or five minutes. Mm -hmm. And then, um, can we get that cooked? We're going to add our sauce in. So you're talking about ten minutes worth of cooking time or so once you get going? Um, yes, because after that we're going to add some... You probably oh. can't see over here. We've got some pineapple in the bowl. Oh, yeah. We're going to add that in, and then you're going to put the top on and let this simmer for a little bit just to get those flavors, uh -huh. you know, good and, and cooked together. Gotcha. Uh, you want to make sure, though, before you add anything else, that the chicken is good and cooked, I assume, mm -hmm. right? Yes. That's so why we're going to cook our chicken first before we add those in there. Yeah. Chicken's a wonderful meat, but it does, if it's not prepared correctly, it can be. Right, you wanna make sure that it's cooked thoroughly. And also you wanna be mindful of whenever you're um, cutting up your chicken. Um, it's one of the reasons why I went ahead and cut that up before we filmed was just because you wanna make sure whenever you're um, cutting that up that you get everything properly sanitized. We don't wanna get any of that bacteria anywhere. We right. don't wanna get anybody sick. So make sure you've washed your hands really good. Make sure you've cleaned off your countertops and surfaces. 
and then this absolutely is not the same knife and cutting board I was using for that chicken. because you do not want to cross contaminate. Right. You want to use one, a, a different one for your vegetables. That one's over in the, the sink still. I haven't washed it yet, but yeah, don't want to <laughs> use the same one. Don't cross contaminate. Especially since we are just sauteing these vegetables, we're not going to cook them all the way through. So you definitely don't want any of that raw chicken juice getting on these and then you mm -hmm. consuming that. Absolutely. Got those there. We have this turned on. I'm going to turn it up a little bit. We have a tablespoon of vegetable oil I'm going to put in there. Cook our chicken in. Okay. Then I am going to dump in our chicken. I'm going to start cooking it. You're sizzling already. Yes. It is sizzling chicken, anyway, by the way. Sizzling it chicken is stir sizzling fry. Chicken. So. We need to hear that sizzle. And you always want to make sure the chicken is cooked through. Yes. Because you don't want to eat chicken raw. And a good thing to keep on hand in the kitchen, um, if you're cooking any type of meat, uh, chicken especially, is a food thermometer, mm. meat thermometer. Um, whenever I'm cooking, ch you're cooking chicken bite size like this. It's pretty. It's easier to tell when that chicken is cooked all the way through because you're not cooking a great big piece. But right. that is something that you can keep on hand. I do have one at my house that I do use whenever I cook large um, chicken breast, and you can just check that internal temperature and make sure that is um, reached the proper temperature what is before the you can see. And um, the proper temperature for chicken is 165 degrees, and it will tell you that on most food. food food thermometers, it will tell you um, what meat is at each temperature. Okay. So 165 degrees, and that's the inside of the chicken. Right. Make sure so you, get you want to make sure that you've got that food thermometer down in there. Mm -hmm. And whenever that's you're so. cooking um, different types of meat for the chicken breast, you can probably just stick it in there. Now you're going to want to do that for each each one though, because you're going to have different size mm, right. breasts in there. And if you are cooking a whole chicken, I know we talk about this a lot at Thanksgiving with food safety for the turkey. You want right. to check it in multiple places. Same thing if you were going to cook a whole um, chicken, right. because some parts cook faster than the other. Right. And you also want to uh, cook, check each of the different pieces of chicken if you're cooking them individually, you know, right. each breast, whatever, because different ovens or stoves or whatever they are, uh, cook differently, right? Different areas on the stove top, right? And sometimes we don't get even sized pieces of chicken, so mm -hmm. one might be a little bigger grill. or a little smaller. Mm -hmm. As you can see, this is cooking up pretty fast. We've still got some pink in there, but... That's right. That's the thing. good thing I like about sauteing is it doesn't take a huge amount of time to cook it. But it looks good. Do you like chicken? I do. You know, last month I think we made fish, right? And we that's did not make your cup fish. Of tea, it was not my cup of tea, but it was um, pretty good. <laughs> you tried it? I, uh, we kept it here in the fridge, so yes, we, <laughs> we tried the leftovers. <laughs> Somebody said it was good. <laughs> it was good. I tried that. I did, I did try that, yes. I will say, since it is still Lent season, mm -hmm. And being Catholic myself, you know, it's that Fish Friday. Mm -hmm. My husband's been fixing me salmon on Fridays, so okay. I'm coming around. Okay, because you don't like salmon. I don't know. <laughs> but, but I'm coming around. He's actually a pretty good cook. He's been fixing it. A, it was a little spicy, and he had this mandarin orange sauce that went with it. It was really good. Okay. So. so for Lent, you gave up saying no to fish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trying new things, see? Yeah. I'm being adventurous and yeah. I'm, it's starting to taste better. I uh -huh. won't say I love it, but. You're coming around. Too. Yes, I really would like to like fish because it is a lean meat. It's really good and healthy for mm -hmm. us. It's a great source of protein, so. Right. It is good to eat. Now, that is if you broil it or you're baking it. Right. Not you deep fry it. Not or deep fry it. Or fry it in any way, I guess. Right. Yeah. The fish fries aren't the most healthy option, but. They are good. 
Chicken can also be a good lean source of protein depending on how you, mm -hmm. you cook it. But you saw we use a tablespoon of oil, not too too terribly much. So that's good, right? Mm -hmm. What you're the way you're preparing this is a healthy right. way to cook. It's not breaded and fried and what have you. It's not fried chicken. Now, Although fried chicken's good too. Our chicken is not having any more pink on the outsides. I am going to cook it a little bit longer just to make sure that we have all the insides good and cooked. How long does something like this continue to cook after it's off the heat? Does it? No, it it's won't. It's pretty done. It, yeah. Once you stop, it's done. Once you no. stop, it's done. It is going to have some of that internal heat. You know, when you take a, you don't want to take a bite immediately after, but it's not actually going to cook any longer. Starting to smell pretty good. Mm -hmm. So this is sizzling chicken stir fry that we're making here at the Marion County Extension Office. And I think that's getting cooked. <clears throat> Your recipe says we're going to push that to one side. We're going to put in our our vegetables on the other. So we've got a cup of red pepper there. Gary, do you want to? Oh. To stir. Look, I've got the chicken back over there. So keep them separate. Yes, keep them separate. Stir that around while I get our other cups of uh, vegetables in there. So we're adding our peppers and corn, broccoli, cauliflower. It's very colorful. Yes, that's why I chose to get the red pepper instead of the green. Give it a little bit more mm -hmm. color. Got some variety. White, green, Red, orange. I know my colors. See. He knows his colors. <laughs> <laughs> I can sing a rainbow. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> that's a new one. On <laughs> it was like Captain Noah or something like that when I was a kid. That may have been a Philadelphia thing. <laughs> <laughs> He'd always open his show with singing about all the different colors of the rainbow. <laughs> Here you can mix. <laughs> okay, now he's hanging it back over. I thought he might. Make sure we keep stirring our chicken too so it doesn't burn. So the juice or the oil that you used is what you're using as well to kind of mix up the veggies there too, right? Right. right. Okay. Once again, we only use a tablespoon, not a whole lot. Mm hmm. If you want a copy of the recipe, you can contact Lizzie here at the Marion County Extension Office, or you can go to the Washington County or the Nelson County Extension Offices as well. And it is in the Food and Nutrition Calendar that mm -hmm. is available at any of the Extension Offices. Well, you might be able to go online to the Extension um, website potentially and look it up. You can put that into your search engine and check that out if you would rather just try that option. Let us know. <laughs> but it is. Sizzling, sizzling chicken stir fry. And we're making the stir fry with the chicken and all this stuff and the sauce. But you could put this over some stuff and make it even a complete meal that way. You could. You could um, maybe fix some brown rice um, and put this on top of that. Or you could eat it uh, plain by itself. It's a little less calories than adding the grain to it. Uh, you could put it in a wrap and eat it that way. You can get a whole whole wheat um, tortilla wrap. So uh -huh. it can be versi versatile, whatever. Yeah. And Lots sometimes of our kids are particular in odd ways. Some kids might eat it in a wrap but not want it over rice. And some kids might want it plain. So uh -huh. that's a good way. This, you know, uh, a dish that you can serve a variety of ways is good if you have some picky yeah. eaters at home maybe. Whatever way they'll eat it is the best way to prepare it. Exactly. <laughs> you just want to make sure that they're getting their their vegetables. Mm -hmm. You can see those are starting to brown some. Yeah, it looks good. Looks really good. It's a nice healthy dish because it's a lean meat that you're putting with the vegetables. Not too much oil. We have the reduced items in our mm -hmm. sauce that we're going to be adding. You're even getting a fruit in there. You're getting you vegetables, are. fruit, protein. You're getting everything. This is like a full uh, plate meal, right? I think the only thing we're missing is some dairy, but if you got you a nice glass uh, of some reduced fat or skim milk. We'll put some cheese on it. <laughs> Gary's getting That'd into more fatting <laughs> with the cheese. 
I see mean, how I kind of steer too. away from yeah. that. <laughs> so is chocolate milk still healthy for you? Um, chocolate milk is still healthy for you because you need that calcium. So if you have kids at home that won't drink milk, um, a glass of chocolate milk a day just so they can get some calcium, not too terribly bad, but it does still, they try to kind of trick you in the grocery sometimes with those labels because it'll say fat free. While the milk may indeed be fat free, it still has sugar. Uh -huh. even more sugar than traditional you know plain milk right. because it does have that chocolate added in there so that's not something while it, you do get calcium still not something that you want the kids to drink right. or you to drink yourself it's all the not time non-fattening right thing. you still are going to get some calcium but it does have even if it's fat free still has oop, the uh, sugar added in there well, this looks all right good. those look like they are getting soft and they're still going to get to cook a little bit now what we're going to do we've got each of those pushed to the side we are going to add in our sauce here uh -huh. we're going to put it in the center of the skillet oh. and we're going to like the red sea it is we're going <laughs> to stir that around and since it's got that cornstarch in there it'll thicken up a little bit okay so you're cooking that kind of... Yeah, it'll be more of a thicker sauce instead of being so runny. Interesting. See, you always learn such good, interesting <laughs> things when you go to the extension office. Yeah, we're just going to keep stirring that until it starts to thicken. You can kind of see where it's bubbling a little yeah. bit, that it's can see that. thickening up some. Yeah. Huh. Did you know that about cornstarch, Gary? Did you learn something new today? I did. It's what they I use in gravy mixtures. Okay. See, it's starting to thicken. I see that. And that's what's making it do it, huh? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Is stir fry is usually a thicker. Mm-hmm, yeah. It's not like a gravy. It is a sauce, right. I guess. Which, right. So now that that's thick, we are going to pour on. We've got eight ounces here of pineapple chunks in their juice. So you do want to add the juice in there. Put that around here. Um, with that, and then you're gonna stir the whole mixture together. Once we th add that pineapple in, you're gonna get that good and stir it up. Oh mm -hmm. man, it smells really good. <laughs> yeah, that's really a nice dish. And as we said, it has vegetables, it has protein, it has fruit, fruit in there. You could pair it with a grain, mm -hmm. get you a nice glass of milk to drink with it, and you have a, a, a complete my plate meal. Fantastic. Sounds good. So we've got that all mixed together. Um, once you get that mixed together, you can uh, want to turn your skillet down a little bit. We're going to turn that. So it's just going to simmer. We're going to put the lid on it. You're going to let that cook. All that's going to do is really get those flavors good and blend it together. And it's going to cook your vegetables a little bit more, make them a little bit tender. And then um, do you have that simmer for a little bit? You're um, probably going to leave that on there for about five more minutes simmering with the lid on and then you can put it on your rice, you can put it in your wrap, you can eat it plain, however you choose to do so, but you're done. And that was a one skillet. I always Absolutely. like when I can fix a meal in a skillet. And that's a sizzling chicken stir fry. Yes. Contact Lizzie to get that recipe. Hold it up so yeah, they can looks see good. the... Some good stuff there. Healthy, good stuff. Nice. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right, this has been Gary White with Lizzie's Spalding at the Marion County Extension Office and get the recipe from one of the extension offices or go by and pick up the food and nutrition calendar for 2016. Come see us. We'll, we'll get you set with recipes. Sounds good. Thank you very much.